raise your hand if you've watched any of our Inspiration Education episodes. Aww, shut up! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, Welcome back to Inspiration Education. Woo! So, Chan, why don't you tell everyone what this episode is about? This episode is about bringing together um, alumni from Girls Trip over the last number of years to hear from your hearts. Um, this the reason we are doing this inspiration education vlog is a direct result of, of Girls Trip. And already we're reaching a broader audience all around the world. And even now we have some of our young people talking with officials at the government level in, in Washington, D.C. So even in just these few number of months, we have made an impact all over the world. So, um, why don't you tell them how we're gonna how we're gonna begin our episode here, Cassie? Yeah, I think what Chan and I want to do first is if you guys could just go around and just introduce yourselves, uh, just you know, name and where you're living now, and then we have like a couple of follow up questions from there, right, Chan? Yeah, and maybe say how many times you went on the trip. My name is Lindsay Reby. I started uh, going on this trip as Lindsay Sire. I went as a student in 2006 and then um, came back for a couple of years as, a, a, I guess, a student intern. Went for a number of years as as a partner with uh, Chandler and in, in the education part of it. So. 2006 to now with a little bit in the middle. My name is Alyssa Wagner. When I went on the trip, I was Alyssa Slight. I went in 2009, right before my senior year. Um, I'm Lene. I also went in 2009, um, just before senior year. Um, I'm Allison, and yeah, I went in 2009. I'm Emma. I went in 2018 right before my senior year. We haven't lost all hope yet in the midst of COVID-19. We are mm -hmm. desperately trying to still get a girls trip going for this summer and you are going to be our what, student intern. intern? <laughs> cool. I'm going to be the intern. Yep. I'm Amelia G. Um, was Amelia Rockliffe. I went, Lindsay was my intern and Jasmine and I were on the trip together and then I went back as an intern with Kirsten. I'm Sarah Marshall. I graduated in 2015 and I went on a girls trip in 2013. <laughs> I'm the other Sarah. Um, I went in 2014 as Sarah Loper and I graduated in 2015. Hi, I'm Kirsten. I graduated also in that year of 2015. During high school, I believe I went twice. And then I had the honor and pleasure of coming back, I think, two more years. Probably more than that. Yeah, yeah. maybe three. I'm Brielle. I went once. Maybe I went in 2014. I thought it was 2015, but I, I, I think it's 2014. I, I'm Ashlyn. And I went with Emma, um, and that was in uh, that was two years ago, so sophomore to my junior year is the year I went, um, and I'm now a senior. Finger snaps for our most current reps to girls trip. Um, Chloe and the other Amelia, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, I'm Amelia Thorson, and I went this past summer. Um, now part of the senior class of 2020, graduating. Hi, my name is Chloe Kim. I went on this trip last year, like, I mean, last summer, and I will be a senior next year. And you are an international student. Tell them where you're from. Oh, I am from South Korea. So we want to ask, we actually, we have two questions. And so the first one we want to ask is um, if you would, wouldn't mind sharing for us, what is your most favorite memory from Girls Trip? Being stuck in Walmart for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, why was that your most favorite moment? Most people are not going to say my most favorite moment of a two-week vacation is being stuck in Walmart. Why was it your most favorite? I think that it was kind of fun because it gave us something like, not, I don't want to say it was like a crisis moment, but it was definitely something where we were all stuck in it together and we were able to kind of bond over that and try and figure out different things that we were able to do even before we got onto the boat or we were out snorkeling or things like that because you had us do an exercise before we left where it was like problem solving and I mm. think that that kind of also kick-started it too mm. with trying to figure out what to do for six hours. But the one that comes to mind first is 
the night that we did, like, I think we call it, like, the hot seat or something like that. I can't quite remember. Um, but that really stands out to me because it was just an opportunity for all of us to, like, come together and, like, raise each other up and, like, mm. talk about, like, point out character traits or characteristics of the person in the hot seat that, like, we really appreciated. And I think that, you know in the craziness of what life can be, it's really easy for us to forget those things about ourselves. You know, I may not feel these things, but like, this is what other people see in me and like yeah. trying to find that truth in myself as well. And also getting the opportunity to like point out what I appreciate in other people as well. I also uh, was thinking hot seat, but that was the first thing that came to mind as well. But I don't, I, I remember doing that of just like building each other up. But I also remember a hot seat where we got to ask anyone anything. Mm. And I specifically remember Meg Chandler. I almost said Mrs. Chandler because I'm not, like, it's so weird to say Meg. <laughs> I remember Chani was in the hot seat and she let us ask her anything. And that was just so impactful for me to um, just see that level of transparency. So I really mm. appreciated that and that really. I feel like I've carried that through. Well. I mean, it's been over a decade now since that trip and just wow. really appreciate um, when people in leadership are transparent and like you can really dig in and you're not afraid to ask questions. So I specifically remember our group had come up with like code words for that's what she said. Oh. And one of them was, what is the time? And I need water. And you started, Chandler specifically started yelling at us like, if you keep asking what time it is, I'm going to take away your watches. And then you said, if you keep asking, you need water, you need to start drinking your water, I'm going to start getting on to you. I just remember that was the funniest thing. There's code <laughs> names for what time is it? Yeah. <laughs> Did we explain to the public why they would need code names for what time it is? Or should we just let that one go? Just let it go. When I was an intern, couple years ago the girls on our trip decided to buy a little rubber shark head at one of the gift shops it was so annoying <laughs> but it was so funny because it got past the point of being annoying that it just became funny yeah Chandler has the shark on her hand and she's just <laughs> making it get closer and closer to my face I don't remember which year it was if it was Amelia and Jazz is maybe, but remember when uh, we were out diving? This is my most memorable. Well, one of my most memorable. We were out diving at uh, Catalina, and either the story of we lost the anchor or the story of uh, the engine broke. We went out to San Clemente, which is yeah. farther and um, and no resources. And on one occasion, yeah, the engine broke, and we had to just. One, we had it was dual engines and one of the engines broke and we had to limp back home. It goes back to kind of what Emma was saying. It was just kind of like that moment of like, hey, we're on a boat, we're hanging out, we're all safe. Like, yeah, here we go. we're fine. So, yeah, it was it's, it's one of those great learning moments where young people are looking at the at the adults and how are the adults responding? Yeah, if if I had like a like an incident memory, it would be losing losing an anchor and having to dive alone at a hundred feet retrieving an anchor. That, that would probably be a big one. You guys know Liz Cole, right? Elizabeth Cole. She, uh, Lindsay, you'll remember this moment. We were in the in the hotel room in uh, yes. Solvang. Oh, Solvang, right? yeah. yes. Yep, and uh, on her hot seat, we had a tremendous breakthrough moment that changed her life. And she's been on a healing path ever since that moment. And many of you now know that she's my daughter. So, you know, I will always look at Girls Trip in a, in a, in a different way and light for eternity because it generated a relationship of where I could adopt somebody. To clarify for the public, when you say she's now your daughter, you actually mean she is your I daughter. I legally adopted her, yeah. yes. Well, I have two competing favorite memories. They're short, so I'll share both. One is either the very first night and we're out on the boat and these dolphins come out of nowhere and just start swimming next to us. And I was like, we're in a Disney film. This <laughs> is... I went to heaven. This is incredible. And then that night, the marina was like right in front of SeaWorld or something. And big fireworks that night. It, I mean, it was just so telling for the rest of Girls Trip. Like magical, over the top, amazing. So that is either my favorite memory or when we bought Chandler her very first bikini. Oh, yeah. It looked so good. <laughs> so I have two. My first one is Lindsay's sock puppet. Or sock Struggled the entire 
So I think I made one dive that I actually was able to get down and actually do something. So that taught me to like just, even though it was hard and frustrating to just keep pushing forward and to um, persevere through the hard times, even though I was very frustrated and annoyed and didn't feel like I was getting the full experience, but then the girls were all like super awesome and brought me in and were like, you know what, it's okay. Like you're still here with us, even though you're not able to get down, you're still part of our group and um, just learning to persevere through the hard times. First is holding a nudibranch in my hand for the first time. Number two is a very cute German exchange student. <laughs> Which is a deeper memory is I remember during Chani's hot seat we were talking about motherhood mm. and Taylor turned to Chani and said you are a good mom mm. um, and just thinking about how beautiful that was at the time but then also how prophetic that ended up being that like two years later you had a daughter as a result of girls trip Mine happened in the beautiful tide pools at Monterey. Up until that point, like, I was in Chani's bio class. Maybe I was failing. Maybe I wasn't. But it was a struggle, and she was with me every step of the way. And we, specifically that semester, had just learned about Rhodophyta. And I wouldn't even remember Rhodophyta, except we are good old pals, due to the fact that I had, like, studied it and studied it and studied it and only just knew the name and that it was a red algae. Like, that's all I needed to know to pass the test. That's all I memorized. And then, tide pools in Monterey, I pick up this, like, red, slimy stuff, and I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And Chani just casually walks by. She's like, oh, yeah, that's where to find that, and, like, moves on. And I'm just, like, in this surreal moment, like, this is Rhodophyta. I am holding Rhodophyta. Like, I'm feeling slimy Rhodophyta. And it finally just, like, clicked. And ever since then, I've just been so encouraged to keep learning beyond the four walls. So, yes. So that was a powerful moment. I love well, that yeah, story, Kirsten, because that's exactly, I mean, that's a, a huge part of what Girls Trip is about, is learning outside of these stupid four walls that we've someone in their ivory tower has decided that we were going to learn in for the last hundreds of years. And look how much you learn from that one little experience. I remember after this like long day of diving, we were like going back to the marina. And I honestly don't even remember who was in this pile, but we just like had our blankets and we were just sitting there and then we all just like fell asleep in this giant cuddle puddle. Cuddle yeah. puddle! It was yeah. me and Lauren McMillan. We were all like, acquaintances and somewhat friends before the trip and then we were just like straight up sleeping in each other's laps in our blankets <laughs> uh oh my goodness it's so hard to pick and choose memories because there's so many good ones yeah. but um one that comes to mind right away is actually it wasn't at one of our destinations but it was in the bus because we did a lot of driving this year and we had a couple of girls who had brought ukuleles mm -hmm. and we decided to come up with a song about all of the different inconveniences of travel. <laughs> um, you know, we sang about, uh, you know, the slimy meat in the sandwiches we were eating and the water that tasted like pennies and one of the girls breaking our flip-flops. Sweet California peach. <laughs> what else did we eat? <laughs> And bread of wheat and water that tastes like pennies. This is so much better than I was envisioning. One other thing is that eating sandwich every time, like every lunch, we ate sandwich. So I kind of think of it right now. Number one resiliency builder having to eat a sandwich every day. We have made hundreds of sandwiches out of this ice chest. I think my favorite memory is kissing my first sea hare at Catalina Island. I never would have been able to experience even holding a sea hare. I didn't even know they existed before coming on this trip. And uh, growing up in the desert and not being by the ocean and being able to do that and to meet a new creature I've never even do existed and yeah. holding that slimy blob of cuteness 
really like I remember that and I still love sea heroes to this day. A lot of brave young women in this group and every single one who's not even here oh, all so took a safe step to be like, you know what, this could I there is so much unknown here, I'm just gonna step into it. So mm-hmm. each and every young woman on any trip represents someone who took a huge step into the unknown and embraced it and look what comes look what comes out of that our other question for you is pretty simple how has girls trip impacted your life okay i'll start it off just get real mushy real quick um so i remember during Lindsay's hot seat my year um she and andrew were still dating at the time and he was going in for a procedure or surgery or something, and she was really concerned about it. I think, Chandler, you asked, you know, is he the one? Like, you're so concerned about him now. Like, is this the person you want to be with? And the fact that she was able to answer with such certainty mm. and knowing that this man was the person she wanted to marry and be with Mm. knowing she was so certain about it that when I did start dating my husband it was I don't want to waste my time and I want to be certain about it I'm thinking about it now and realizing a lot of certainty of I want to be able to say that about someone came from a hot seat on this trip almost nine years ago going off of that um that really resonated with me just in the way that you know, girls trip gives us this opportunity to have, you know, to know each other in a different way, and especially um, our teachers in a different way. And I think that like, I remember just being in like awe of the faith and the confidence that um, Chandler, you showed us like outside of the classroom, like that's, that's how it would really impact me. And I think like to echo what Amelia is saying, you know, I didn't realize in the moment when I was seeing, you know, faith modeled or I was seeing, you know, how to build somebody else up or how to encourage or take that leap of faith and, you know, believe in myself, but also believe in, you know, the strength of the people around me. Like, those are all lessons I didn't realize I was learning. You know, like at the time, if you'd asked me, oh, what did you learn on Girls Trip? I like try to tell you something cool I learned about something I, you know, found when I went snorkeling or something like that. But in hindsight, I think, like, there was, like, confidence that I found in myself from that trip that I took on to college. There was, you know, just so many things I learned about, like, friendship and just, like, knowing each other's hearts. And I think that, like, I really, I know my life benefited from getting to know not only my peers, but my mentors in in a different space that wasn't you know, the 50 minutes that's biology class or English class or even sports or something. So, well, to go off of that, um, just thinking about cultivating a love of learning is something that I really took away um, from our time. You, you hit on this, uh, Kristen, about you're in it, you know, you're learning real world. And I, I just so appreciate it. I remember we had a lot of talks about science and faith and even evolution and how do all these things kind of fit together. And I'll never forget learning about when Chandler was talking about God's general revelation versus his revelation and how these things will never contradict that sometimes maybe we're either interpreting scripture wrong or, you know, science hasn't caught up to the Bible or, but that God never contradicts himself and that there's one um, in that. And that has really just served me so well, especially when I was studying philosophy and there are a lot of things that felt uncertain or this, I don't understand how this lines up with scripture and being able to take a step back and go, I can trust God's word. And I know, I know that man is limited. And so whatever scientific theory they have or, um, new philosophy is out there that doesn't last necessarily. The word of God does last. Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah, I think it not only gave me a love of learning, but more of a confidence in my faith and to go out into the unknown with faith instead of fear. Seems like a common theme in a lot of these is that you learned on Girls Trip, many of you learned that it's okay to rely on other people, that not every person in our life will betray, um, not every person in our life is untrustworthy, because we've all, I, 
I can think of all of us on this page right now have experienced people who have betrayed us or mm. uh, have been untrustworthy. But Girls Trip renewed that and restored and redeemed the idea that relationship is important. I think in a way, too, this is just coming, like, coming into my mind, kind of connecting what Kirsten was talking about earlier, of like, like learning hands-on and learning in, in your environment. I feel like Girls Trip gave us the opportunity to, like, learn through experience how to, like, take that leap of faith and, like, let go of, like, your fears or whatever it was you were wrestling Girl. with and, like, lean in, yeah, <laughs> and, like, you know, lean into the people around you and trust that, like, they're there to catch you. We went through this moment of being like, oh, like, this is what, like, this is what we've been told, but, like, this is what, you know, our Bible teachers have meant or our parents meant or, you know, whatever it is, like, this is what it actually looks like. Mm -hmm. It really was a different platform to learn, you know, what we were being told by our mentors and the people around us. Mm -hmm. What Brielle is saying is making me think of, some of you guys know, I think Mr. Dalton, if you had him in class, is a huge fan of this Puritan prayer book called The Valley of Vision that is just filled with utterly beautiful prayers. And, um, like, I think a lot of times, especially all of us having gone to a Christian school all our lives, or for some of us just high school, but we learn a lot about what the truth is. But I think there's a difference between learning the truth and experiencing the truth. And I feel like Girls Trip has always been, for me, and I think for a lot of us, like an opportunity to experience the true narrative, whether it's mm -hmm. about people or about God or about ourselves. And there's this line in one of the prayers that like, every time I read it, it makes me think of Girls Trip. Um, but it says, um, give me intenser faith in the eternal verities, verities means truth burning into me by experience the things I know. When you first asked the question, Cassie, my mind went, I don't, don't know why, but my mind went straight to John Steinbeck. Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So you think about John Steinbeck and writing this lot, right, about all of his experiences. And then you think about us, whether it was one summer for two weeks or, you know, 15, with Meg, 15 consecutive summers for sometimes more than two weeks. Sometimes it was four weeks with the boys trips. And we have this experience where we're all together and our logs, like going, going back to this tapestry idea, our logs kind of like meet, right? And we're on the sea and we're doing these crazy things and engines are breaking and people are sick with shark faces in their, in their face and we're doing hot seats and all this amazing bonding. And then we disperse. Right, and we're all over the all over the world now, and we have this opportunity where we had this moment in time where our logs all connected, and I just think it it's a testament to the fact where okay we're meeting here on Zoom and all this this tech stuff is amazing, but how amazing is it when you get people together in the same room, mm -hmm. physically the 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 um, experience of sharing emotion together. Um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's amazing. And I am so thankful that I got to be a part of it, um, for so many years. And my prayer is that it continues in whatever fashion that is, that it continues because that moment in time of people's, people's laws, their stories connecting is just, it's irreplaceable. So that's, oh. that's my, uh, that's my two cents. Oh man. I'll add another four cents to that one. I, love how you said that when we're in the same room that we're sharing emotion and that might be one of my bigger takeaways is for the ladies on this chat that I've actually been on the trip with I mean I have vivid memories in my mind of sharing specific moments with them and the emotion that goes behind that and uh it it's it was such an honor to be a part of that I think something um that has really stood with me throughout the course of time from the girls' trip is really just this, this is kind of changing gears a little bit, but I love all of these stories, um, but just the sense of adventure that was cultivated on the trip. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even necessarily one instance, but just, I mean, I guess just things like the engine breaking or, you know, and it was just this perspective of what an adventure, this is crazy. Like, like, we get to choose how we respond, um, and that's huge. One of my big takeaways was just, like, living in the moment, um, wherever you are, and that goes along with, like, 
even if something's not working or, you know, the bus gets stuck or, you know, we lose someone on a hike, like there are going to be those times and you're just going to make the most of it, especially when you're with um, those people and have that deep relational connection that you're building over those two weeks, going through the fun times and the harder times. Um, but one of the things that Chandler was saying quite a few times over our trip was the most important people are the people right in front of you, mm. like in that moment. And just being present and connecting and being aware of people. Um, and some of the girls on my trip are like some of my closest friends. And I got to learn so much more about them on this trip that I had never known. Just because we had that um, that open vulnerability in the adventure and in those new circumstances. I was going to say the same thing. Um, I remember... The first day when we started journaling, I literally wrote on my journal, live in the moment and embrace it. Um, because I think I remember that. Keep going. <laughs> um, I was really struggling the first like couple days because I was like, well, I've never been away from my family this long. And I'm not like, I was in the same class as Lene, but we weren't like in the same friend group. Like we weren't super close. I didn't really know Allison that much. And so it was kind of interesting in how over the two weeks, like my mindset totally changed and it was like, what are you doing? Like you need to be in this moment, experiencing these girls, learning about these girls and just loving on these girls. Um, and so I've definitely taken that on with me throughout life and just, uh, especially now in this pandemic, like, um, I feel like my husband and I have, this is the most time we've ever spent together in the six years we've been together, <laughs> like living in the moment and embracing it and just cherishing these moments that we have, um, and just letting go of the chaos that's around us and just embracing it. Plus one to what Alyssa said about stepping out of your comfort zone. I agree wholeheartedly. It was just like, <laughs> what am I doing? Like two weeks is a long time. Like I don't really know these people. So yeah, definitely a stretching experience, but mm -hmm. very good. I feel like along with what they were saying, it kind of helped grow that sense of adventure in me. Like going, looking forward, the things that I did after girls trip, like I moved to India for six months. I like, look for those adventures now and like embrace the uncomfortable and the you know like I only have exactly what I need but that's okay kind of adventures now and I think that kind of probably sparked with girls trip. I think this trip really cultivated a sense of real sisterhood within me mm -hmm. and what it means to be vulnerable and be a real person. I mean we couldn't wear makeup, we can't do our hair. Mm -hmm. That takes those masks off from girls that they love to hide behind that. Mm -hmm. And um, we all got to be the same. Everyone was the same. I love what you're saying. It's like being vulnerable. For me to not have makeup on, it's like, oh, you know, I have, to, <laughs> I have to not wear makeup and what? Not do my hair and it's being vulnerable. But there's something really magical about that. I just remembered when I was, um, an intern, it was when I was going through a couple of rough patches with, like, college roommates. Um, and that was my sisterhood, was my college roommates. And then I came on this trip, and I remember talking through what was going on. And I was the one that was supposed to be mentoring, but was realizing that I was learning from the girls that were on the trip with me. Um, I don't know if you remember this, Mrs. Thomas. Oh, yeah, that was one of the moments I was thinking of. Um, but I remember, uh, ah, I remember uh, we were having a very serious conversation. And I remember the conversation very vividly. But what I remember the most is walking away from the conversation, telling myself that I wanted to have the faith that was like your faith. I wanted to be as godly of a woman as you were and like now where I'm at in my faith I'm like so strong in my faith now and it was because of you in that conversation that we had so yeah thanks for sharing that that's really sweet
Maybe in summation of so many of those wonderful answers, I think the thing that impacted me most was a new experience and a better understanding of mentorship and discipleship. And that has never, not for a day, like left my mind. If I could say anything as we log off, but, but right off of uh, Kirsten's point there, is just to go out and continue the, the work that was started when it was, whether it was Leona or Bus 5 or, you know, wherever. Um, you know, continue pouring into the people you work with, you live with. Um, I'm sure all of you someday raising with, you know, it's, it's a cyclical Cool, um, cool is not cool enough of a word, but that's what I'm going with because I got mom brain. But it's a cool thing that we got to do and we get to continue to do day in and day out. So that's that's my prayer is that you guys continue to do that and find little places where you can pour into each other and to others. Boy, yeah. Amen. Amen. You, you take Girls Trip, a little bit of it with you wherever you go. Thank you guys for putting this on. This was such a treat. Much love, friends, to all of you. Much love. Oh, Bye. Jamal. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, all. Wow. My brain is so full from that magic. Yeah. We already do. We have a really cool job, but this more amazing and deep, deep blessing that the, the ministry that we have, the discipleship opportunities that we have, and how it's two-way. It's a two-way thing. Yeah, you heard Gosh. the girls talk about, like, they learn and we're learning at the same time. It's this lifelong learning. This, this thing called Girls Trip that you started 15 years ago has had such a lasting impact. They could all come up with something so quickly. And that's yeah. what education oh, looks instantaneously. Like. It was effortless. Yeah, that's that is education. That is when you take kids out of those four walls and you make meaningful moments with them, and you are learning in the moment, and you're loving, and you're each real other. with them. You're authentic. You're genuine. You're transparent. Your learning just goes like this, and. But it's not just academics. It's learning about life and about yourself and about other people. And It's contextual. The most important person in front of you right now at that moment is, is that person right in front of you. That, you know, and that, whether it be in a conversation or making a decision in a time of crisis, that's, that's real life. And look how they've taken those moments and applied them into their adult lives. I need to move to California. All right, let's go. You know? I'm not afraid to do that. Take girls trip and whatever role you and I and Lindsay have played in their lives as their teachers and so on, it's just a small part of the picture mm -hmm. of, of how people have fed into their lives. But sometimes our chunk is bigger than we know or, or more significant than we know or realize. Yeah. You know? Well, I thoroughly enjoyed being able to step away from this COVID-19 life for a moment and relive beautiful times what is good right and true what whatever is good right true faithful beautiful you think about these things you dwell on these things yeah that's what we did today yeah that so, is what we did today for those of you out there that didn't get to join today's call we love you and we were thinking about each of you on that trip you're all in our oh, hearts there's, without a doubt i was thinking about so many other people yeah sure and uh, if you're thinking about going on a girl's trip in the future, if you're watching this and you're like, maybe this is what I want to do, or if you're a parent out there watching this for your young lady, take the leap. You will not regret it. <laughs> you will not regret it. All right. Episode 37, uh, an in, episode of beauty, tr uh, truth, and love, big time. In the so, books. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> it's so gross. Ha, ha, ha.